wife and kids. Help me, Clarence, please. Please. I want to live again. I want to live again. Almighty life. I'm in a stake in Baragate. I'm at the base of. Another episode of What the Hell Happened to Them? We continue forward to the Adam Sandler saga. We're getting close to the halfway point here, but today we have a gem of the Nile. What is it, Joe? It's Click. Sorry, Joe, to cut you off. Joe! What, give us a plot summary of your Click. Well, hold on. Introduction. I'm, I'm Joe, and I'm here with Patrick. Okay. Hey, I'm Patrick. How's it going, everybody? I'm glad to be here today. I'm sure uh, you're not just tuning into the now, Click episode. Now we're, gonna, now we're gonna bring you back to your host. All right, hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> Joe, can you give us a plot summary, please? Uh, click is if you put uh, the the famous Frank Capra movie "It's a Wonderful Life" next to uh, Charles Dickens' "A Christmas Carol," and then you uh, just jerked off a Happy Madison all over it, and the, th- that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> the the what. Oh, I'm sorry, Lev. Yeah, t- today's episode is brought to you by Sidewalks. Walk on them. Give them, give them, give them, go for a wild ride on the sidewalk. Hold up. We're brought to you people by Sidewalks? Sidewalk, the sidewalk, big, big sidewalk. It feels like it's not getting enough lobby power in Hollywood these days, so they've come to the little guys like us. They're doing a grassroots campaign. So. All right. But hey, it helps pay the, the hosting bills. So here we are. Thanks, Sidewalks. I use you nearly every day. All right, Joe. Yeah. What else did you think about the clicks? All right. See, because it starts off right. What is the frowny face? I liked it. You liked it? I like this movie. You should feel bad about that. <laughs> I was. This is what I was. I, I was. Yeah. Who wanted to guest on this with us? Who was it? Wouldn't somebody I want think to join Casey us? Casey wanted to come back for with us on this one. Oh, I feel like I have to atone with Casey. We should bring her back for something. Find a movie she likes. We'll bring her back. I think this is the end of the line of her watching it. Oh, maybe Funny People. Yeah, right, bring her back. For the, get, get on her for the Funny People. Let's do that. That's, just, that's a good. All one. right, I gotta. We gotta make that right. All right. Yeah. So you liked it. So this movie starts off interesting, though, right? This is sort of like. Him being the family man here. Oh, this might that's right? my first notes. Beginning of Sandler's new shtick, where he's just the goofy dad <laughs> who has never experienced poverty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy is always well off and his kids are always like well taken care of. Even if he's not like he's not even made partner yet, but he's like, Oh, we can't buy them the bikes, but they have a nice house. Yeah, to you live can't in. afford uh, <laughs> two bikes. They're well, like also 40 know, bucks at a Walmart. I also know... Yeah, and he's a big... He loves Walmart and Right, Kmart. he's got his nice multiple-story house. Yeah, he's but... He's got a dog. They, they just go through dogs, in fact. They, every time a dog dies, they buy a new dog. But they don't buy a new duck. They, they always... The, right, they have an endless amount of supply of Twinkies and Yodels. Hostess they, is very nice to this family. I also... But the, I noticed that the kids are living in the same room. Really? Yeah. I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. I did a lot of rendering he, during this he movie. W- <laughs> he wakes them up no in the middle lie. of the night to say that he got the the promotion where he hadn't yet. Because he just you know what like that he's a deal. That doesn't feel like that doesn't feel like a set designer or like oh it's like that's not the production man is like yeah the production man is not like oh let's put them in the same room to make it look like they're not that well off. I know that's really good. No, it's for when you start to go on. When you Shit, I can't, I don't want to, put them in, this, put them in the fucking same room, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, we're going to get through this. They could have had them like on the we're couch already at, We're already at 107 minutes for this movie, we got to fucking, yeah, it's very, very long. long. Very long. It's like, and then when you think about 107 minutes, not that long, but oh my god does it feel long. Yeah, and this then, movie feels so long. There's, again, yeah. no jokes. <laughs> no jokes, like the first joke that comes up is like a dog humping a, like at first if you're like, oh, he's a family man, maybe this would be like a little cleaner, and then boom, dog humping a duck, and you're like, ah, right, well, like, I mean, I and, guess not. Oh, what about when he's uh, driving really fast, and then he slows down to see Don't the girl. at the woman's breasts dress. running around. Yeah. Or, or like his, his speedy sex with his wife that always ends in his goofy smile at her disappointment. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right? And, but like, I thought they were going to resolve that at the end, though. Like, maybe no. that, that would be like the last shot. No, they end in the middle, like in the middle of a scene, as they usually do in Hype Mass, and they just kind of stop. <laughs> They're like, uh, 
They'll, they just they just sort of end. They run out of time or they run out of pages and they're like, all right, well, I guess we're just done here. All right, cut. We're cut. We're done. It's over. The end. We got nothing else to film. I, I believe this is out of Frank Karachi. I picture. don't know who the director was. The director I think of it was, The Waterboy. I think it was, like, I think it was nobody. No, it's Frank Karachi. I don't think so. I'm going to fight you on this. I'm gonna, I have IMDb opened up right now. Right. Uh, almost 100% but you know, sure. you, you know, I, you know what else? Addison also has another inexplicably hot wife. Like that's Kate Beckinsale. The, the the what's her name from Underworld? The Vampire Queen. She's, she's, is that her title? I don't know. I have never seen those movies. Um, I think yeah, she falls. Frank Karachi. I knew. Really? It. Well, whatever, Joe. You win. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, just this just reminded me. What? This movie was nominated for one Oscar. <laughs> This is special hold up. Effects? We should have we should have opened up this movie as what? Adam Sandler's Oscar nominated click. <laughs> what do I, what do it's for, for makeup and effects for that for fat when, suit. Was fat. That thing, you know, you know what? I remember looking at that and going, that doesn't look that good. And no, it doesn't. Like I looked at it and said, that doesn't look that good. But I guess in 2007, when did this come out? Six. Six. My God, I'm old. I guess in 2006 they were oh, like, sorry, good uh, best, best achievement in makeup. It was nominated. I almost thought it won. <laughs> what did it lose to? Uh, oh, well, let's find out. Well, tell me. Well, no dead air. Come on. <laughs> is so is uh, can, can you answer this for me, Joe? Is that yes. Prince? The like the the, the 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 Saudi Arabian Prince who shows up at the beginning of the movie? Is that Prince? No, the Prince that shows up, the Saudi Arabian Prince when he's pitching the the. Is, is that, that Rob the, Schneider? Yeah, it's Rob Schneider. That's Rob Schneider. Yeah, it's Prince Abibu. Playing another person yes. outside of his race. Yes, Prince Abibu. Don't Love forget his, don't Love forget his name. Isn't that the greatest name ever? Haven't you ever heard of a better name than Prince Abibu? And you know, I say, no, you up, haven't. Shut up. They really play with this remote theme pretty early on. But let me tell you. Let me tell you, Joe. Oh, oh. Yeah? <laughs> what, what, what? That year, yeah. up against Click yeah. for Best Achievement in Makeup yeah. was Apocalypto. Okay, sure. But the winner that year, yeah. Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> God, that, 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 that click I had to know, like, fuck, I'm not. Should I even fucking go and embarrass myself? <laughs> like, I have to think, though, he's walking around town. He's like, yeah, I'm a, I was Academy Award nominated. Oh, really? For a movie? That's not important. The point was I was Academy. Just hire me for your job, please. Oh, so wonderful. Henry Winkler shows up, too. Shows up. He's the he plays he's the dead. dad. That's pretty cool. He plays in the contributing factor. Me liking this I, movie. I like some Henry Winkler. He's pretty sweet. <clears throat> Uh, right. And do you know his mom? No. Yeah, I know, but I don't know her name. Julie Kavner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what she's been in? Yeah, I know. She's, she's been in The Simpsons. She did she's some Marge James Simpson. L- she did some James L. Brooks stuff too early on, I believe. Yeah. Oh, you think he's just more holdover from James L. Brooks? Era? Maybe. He's like, oh, I got Clarence Lee's been for the longest year. This, I'm going to bring back. <laughs> I don't think he brought it on because of James L. Brooks. I think he brought it on because he was in Spanglish with it. That's my thought. Okay. When Ben... His his son was on the couch. Yep. When he's like seventeen, when he's supposed to be seventeen, that's what. Yeah. That says is, is that he, the, when he's fat, you, he's seventeen. Do you recognize that actor? No. It's supposed to be Jonah Hill. Is that Jonah Hill? That looks nothing like Jonah Hill. I think maybe it kind of does. Maybe like a young Jonah Hill. Yeah. Well, it would have been like Jonah Hill, like yeah. 23, 22. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I just didn't understand. Like in the beginning of the movie, 21. like when, when he's like he's so, like yeah. you got to get to your son's swim meeting. Oh, I, mean, I don't. What's the big? What's the big deal? Do you want? Oh, right? do you want to know why they had him at the swim meeting? Why? So he could meet uh, Sean Astin's character. I mean, I get fine. So Sean Astin, but I don't. But like, like if you're gonna, if you want to show him up being a bad father, missing the one swim meeting, the, I don't know. It was to introduce characters. Like who cares? Are you kidding me? I know, oh, but who cares? It was also to play- and like his parents show up. Like swim meeting's not this big. I don't think. Right? I mean, I never did any of these things when I was growing up. But like, whatever. You know, just who cares? The mar- the marching band. Did you, did you, it wasn't a marching, a marching band, band song. Yeah, when they were like it was a marching band like type. When they at the swim meet, that song was playing. Oh, song. It sounds like an orchestra playing. I don't remember it was, the song. It's an Offspring song. I don't care. Yeah, oh, I'm just saying it was weird because that's not. Because it's dated. Because the movie's dated. It's very dated. Right. <laughs> like, the, the, movie, oh, the movie opens up with snow on TV. This movie's dated. They don't even do that anymore. Snow on TV. Yeah, like when it's like, you know, like when the signal's gone and stuff. Uh, whoa. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. You barely remember that. Like, they, that hasn't been around since 2008. They just don't do that anymore. Yeah. I like it when he goes into work, and the only people that work there are really hot women and Rachel Dratch for some Oh, reason. hey, ooh, ooh, shots fired. Like I said, <laughs> already. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Right.
Rachel Tratch, you're, you're, a, you're a lovely person, but I mean, could, uh, these, are, these are like Sports Illustrated models you're up against, right? You have to understand this, don't you, Rachel Dratch? Well, while we're don't also you? on the topic of Rachel Dratch, yeah. uh, the awkward yeah. making fun of her for being transgender... Well, that's very... that didn't even go anywhere either. You know, was... I, th- I thought maybe like he was gonna learn to be a better boss to Rachel Dratch, but there's no real resolution there. Like the only thing is he goes so far in the future. The resolution just... is she becomes a man. She becomes a man, like that solves all her problems. But that didn't even look like those were what her problems were in the first place. Yeah. Oh, like when she runs over to him with a note and just says, "I can't." Yeah, go I go to the bathroom. bathroom. Like it looked like assertiveness was her issue. Maybe and so it's like, "Hey, go go get him." You know, nothing. Can I go to the bathroom? That was kind of funny though. That, <laughs> that was that was the moment. That was the moment where I gave her I gave a chuckle. I did have a chuckle. For that moment, I'm like, I won't, I'll give this movie its dues when it gets there. It just doesn't um, always get there. So many, like, and then, and then, the, and then the guy, the boss at the job, he has these two incredibly hot secretaries the, too. The guy, like, I won't you stop. Don't know who David Hasselhoff is? Oh uh, yeah, that's, I knew he looked fucking familiar. Like a Christopher fat, Walk- fat David Hasselhoff. Christopher Walken's in this. Christopher, I know who Christopher Walken is. We got some good actors in this. And you know what? Jennifer they get, Coolidge. Like, like, the, the son starts cursing because the dad starts cursing, and the mother gets all mad about it. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't, know, I don't know. I never got why cursing for children is a big deal, right? Like, oh, the, first of all, first of all, they're learning it when they're in elementary school. So, parents, if you're listening, get and you have a, a, a seven-year-old. Guess what? He knows just curse words. He knows them. So, and then by the time they get to high school, they're just using them free floating anyway. So, what do we give a shit, right? Right? They got. What, I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the <laughs> shots fired against parents. <laughs> No, no. Pew, pew, this, pew. Is, this is Pat's parenting tips. No, no, no. <laughs> Parents, let your kids fucking curse. Because nobody gives a fucking shit, all right? They're not magical, powerful words that can, that can destroy villages and set fires to their enemies. No, they're just words that don't mean anything. That's their, they're purely arbitrary sounds that we, that we con- a listener, construct a meaning upon. So let them fucking curse. Teach them just say, hey, just, just, just do it. When, don't, don't, don't throw it around like it's a poodle. <laughs> And then problem, boom, problem solved, a, a the poodle, end. A poodle, a poodle. All right, um, there. Th- yeah, that is going to be a new segment because this is going to be part of Adam Sandler's new thing, though. He's he's playing so now he's got to be parenting kids, right? It's just it's just Pat's modern. parenting tips. Like, like I'm around kids all the time. Like, don't swear on the kids. I'm like, your kid, your kid knows it. I'm sorry, he knows it. And if he doesn't know it now, he'll know it in five years. And he uses it just as much as you do. So just let the kid, kid curse, then you can curse with him. It's a bonding moment for you. Uh, all right. I, yeah, whoa. <laughs> Seems to have some anger here. Um... Yeah. I f- so I I gave up taking notes for this pretty quickly because I was like, oh, I just like this. Yeah, movie. I was doing it. like I knew the quarter trick was gonna come back. Oh yeah. Right. It was too oddly specific and shoehorned in there to to just be a throwaway nothing. Yeah. And I'm Sandler like jumping over the fence and yelling at the kids. He really got over that fence. Yeah. I'm like are you? <laughs> he just he just like he's, took a step over he's and he was done. Ready for Zohan. I guess I don't know. But like like what's the point of that? Like he's supposed to be like an angry dad. Is that what he's doing, or is he protective father? Like they they just really they did it to have Adam Sandler be angry for a little bit, and then that was it. Like, yeah. He didn't really do anything. All right. Before everybody gets to my back for liking this, movie, I'm on your back. I really think I only like this movie because it it really did nail the the father son thing. It just it had those beats. I don't know. It really it's had those just, that it was just like, so. Oh. I don't know. It's cheap. It's easy. It's it's. I don't know. It's it's the second half. Forgets to be a comedy, like that's no. This, yes. I don't think this movie ever thought it was a comedy. No, this movie is just, just trying to throw some stupid jokes in there with the boobs and the slapping in his a, face and the farting in his face. A straight out drop. No, right? this, I'm I'm campaigning. This is for this should have been no, for, uh, no best Golden Globe drama. Was it not for best Golden Globe comedy? No. Oh, good. Of course not. I don't know. But you, you, it's an Adam Sandler movie. It's, <laughs> hey, 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 Adam Sandler's other movie. Shot fired right there. Shot fired from Joe. <laughs> With his little BB gun. Pew, pew, pew. The little pellet gun. Uh, no. Yeah. 11, I, I, was, I wrote down some times. Uh, 11 Give minutes, time. really hammering home the butterfly effect that's going to be happening in this. They, if you don't do something, bad things will happen. This movie has so much subtlety not in it. <laughs> 14 minutes, he falls asleep. That's when he falls asleep on the bed. I yeah. Like, oh, I, well, oh, yeah, it's going to be a dream. I guess we're going to be a dream now. Yeah. I can't wait to come back here later he on. He literally just, go, he, like, he pops his head down, he's like, yeah. and then he gets up. Like, 
and he's like, oh, the Beyond section. Time to, like, oh, well, it's, that's this. Here's comes the, a dream. I guess it's a dream that somebody let him sleep in a bed bath and beyond. That's weird. It was Nick Swartzen. Yeah, Nick he's Swartzen. like, I, Swartzen. I, always, I always fall asleep on these. Well, so Nick Swartzen had some weird jokes in there too. Like, I almost, I almost he's, think, I almost think that they weren't written in the script. Like, that's how almost that's how good these lines were. I really feel like Nick Swartzen just was like on the set visiting Sam. Yeah. Time, and he's like, oh, hey, do you want to do this movie? Do you want to just put on a jacket? Get this fucking movie. Get, Come on, put a vest on. Oh, well, you already have a vest on. Just put this. Well, pin what's on. my character? I don't know. You're a guy to bed bath and beyond. Beyond. I'll you, see you later. You might not even work here. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. That's your choice. See you around. And then he just brought that into the character. He's like, yeah. I don't even know if I work here. <laughs> yeah. it's, I don't know. I'm joining for friends. Maybe not. Maybe I have no friends. Will be my friend? That kind of um, worked. I Angry re- Sandler, though. I, I'm saying some angry moments in this movie. Wasn't doing it for me. Like That's usually the go-to. I'm saying like getting angry. Yeah. not feeling it here. Yeah. I'm starting to feel like I think Uh-oh. I I think I said a, what? <laughs> You're starting to feel what? I think I said a little <laughs> while ago, like in one of our early early podcasts, that there was that some part of the issue I think Sandler ran into was that he, like he got too old for his stick, and I'm really feeling it in this movie. Like I don't know, it's just. It's well, don't don't worry. He's gonna drop it very soon. He's he, just gonna not even play the straight man. He's just gonna walk through his movies with his friends. When he was twenty, he's when he was going twi- on vacation, says so turn the camera on. <laughs> when he was twenty six and doing the fart in people's face, I mean, all right, I oh, guess. Oh yeah, that was. I guess that's all right. But now he, I don't know. Now it's just too, my thing now is, too old for it, Adam Sandler. I I think it just feels sad. If they gave me the the like the. The, the, the keyboard yeah. or whatever. Let me do some editing. I'll cut this thing down to 90 minutes. <laughs> Get rid of all like the, the boobs, the fart jokes, the really creepy homophobic remarks and the, stuff like that. And we can make this into a really tight, sad father-son drama. Nah, it's not sad. It's, I don't know, cliche. It's oh, not sad. I, I knew it was cliche, but... Just when, Plus, when he misses out on his father dying, like I don't know, and I was just like, oh, I, no. I, 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 I these mean, are things I worry about. This, <laughs> like he, I, like he was, like he was, he was, he was like a rich CEO. Like he looked pretty good for his age. I don't know why he couldn't remarry. Right, like, his, like his life oh, was because so because he loved those hobos. His life was so terrible when his wife divorced him. Like he never got over her. Like I don't know. Right? Like, his life shouldn't be that terrible. For me, especially since you're a CEO. Guess what? You're not working that much. Oh, well, he'd be, he'd be playing a lot of child support to those kids. I mean, I guess, but it seemed like they he didn't had a, any of that. It seemed like he still had a really good relationship with his kids. That's where I would ask for reshoots. You know, like, like, he was over that house, and he didn't even know he was divorced yet. Like, his kids were like, oh, hey, you're just here showing up he randomly. kept walking through his... He was fast-forwarding through all of his life. I know. He, I'm he just missed saying. out on so many moments. I'm just saying, he, like... like he it, sees it, his it daughter, be, he's like, uh, wait... You're my daughter. You've got boobs. Like, and they kept, <laughs> that was really creepy when he kept hitting on his daughter. <laughs> like he was like, "Ah, oh, who's who's this hot chick next to you, Ben?" And he's like, "That's your daughter." And he's like, "She should really be putting more clothes on." No, I know, but I, I kind of like that double standard though. Like it's almost like Sandler winking at his own gender stereotypes. Like uh, I, am, I objectify you until I know you're my daughter. Oh, that's yeah, I feel like that was right? very present in this movie. Right, and th- and then all of a sudden, like, ooh, I guess every someone is everybody's daughter. Like, like that's what it and is. That's, but I feel, yeah, like he was like he objectifies the woman, and then he comes right back in the end. He's like, "Oh, hold on, your mom's smarter than me." Yeah, <laughs> like he does that. He's, he's, yeah, he's like, "I want you to be good at calculus," and he's and she, he's, she, and the daughter's like, "Oh, you're gonna help me with calculus," and he's like, "Oh, your mom will help you." Yeah, <laughs> like it was like, "Oh, okay, oh, like, a little course correcting, but yeah, yeah. it's just." That's fine. I need to look up if he wrote this. I think he had something to do with it. Right? And for me, such a talented architect, you think he would be better at math, right? Like, I would. <laughs> I would think that wouldn't be that hard of a subject for I him. really... Did he have anything to do with the writing? He did not write Who wrote this. wrote this script? Steve Curran and Mark O'Keefe. Who are those people? Uh, I'm looking up Steve Curran right now. Yeah, you don't know. Oh! Know. Oh. He was nominated for three primetime Emmys. For what? Uh, I'll look it up. You don't even know. I just I'm looked up this John guy. I'm done with you. Uh, Seinfeld. Oh, yeah? Saturday Night Live and Saturday Night Live. Yeah, so whatever Saturday Night Live. Oh, the... but he he won some Razzie Awards. Yeah, for, for, for Adam Sandler movies? Jack and Jill. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's Look a little at down that. The line. Look at that. But he also, Jack and Jill came out in 2012. Can you believe that? Oh, I'm so 2012? Old. I'm wasting my life, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> on these dumb podcasts. Uh, he was also nominated in 2013 for A Thousand Words, that Eddie Murphy movie. So he's... Like, he's just... He, he's just getting tossed around. But he he worked on movies like Bruce Almighty. Yeah, not so great. Evan Almighty. 
Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I think he was just part of that. The... Is, isn't it weird how bad Adam Sandler is with remotes in this movie? What do you mean? Like He's great with remotes. The, like the, oh, at the beginning of the movie when like he's it's just all, like, oh. like it's, it's not even possible to be that terrible at remotes. I don't think there's that. Like, it's so... Sh- it's, it's such a fake thing. It's so poorly written. Well, it's also dated because we don't have to deal with the remotes anymore. No, nah, but I don't know. Even then, like, <laughs> uh, listen, I grew up with old people that aren't great at remotes, all right? They, they, they found a way to get over it. They, they weren't turning on garages and shit, all right? I mean, we didn't have a garage, but... So they knew how to. They knew how to work a TV. Let me tell you that. Although we did have a TV. They knew how to work a TV. We did. We, so we did have a TV that you could only work with turning the knobs no, was, on it. Me we, too. We had that TV. Great times. We had a TV. We also had a TV that would, you know, back when you couldn't bring home a TV, like because they were so heavy, they had to bring it. They had to bring it oh, to you. On the truck. The big <laughs> fucking TV, and you put it down somewhere, and it never left that spot ever. Yeah, you couldn't even move it around. But, so you got to make sure you're gonna put it where the whole family can see it. <laughs> Because that's what it's doing for the rest of its life. And that, man, that, we got some life out of TV. That TV is pretty good. I miss, I miss the cathode TVs, Joe. I miss them. I said, all in all, pretty meh, because it really could have nailed it. <laughs> uh, like, and this Bed Bath & Beyond thing. Like, didn't Family Guy do a Bed Bath & Beyond joke like that? Yes. Right? I, can't, I, think, I can't remember I which... I did it first. I can't remember which came first. But yeah, I remember. I remember the, 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 there's like a Beyond section. It's like weird crap in yeah, there. Yeah, and when Peter goes to the Beyond section, he just falls all the way. Yeah, to he space, falls in like and space. He's just like, oh, here we go. Yeah, that's, that's right. I remember that. The um, it, but like, did they like? Do you think that they had like a lot of talk with Bed Bath and Beyond? Like, hey, can we do a Bed Bath and Beyond joke? Would you mind? Can we film in your store? I feel like when Bed Bath and Beyond is approached, it's just for that one joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Poor Bed Bath and Beyond. You know, it would be even funnier if they actually added Bed Bath and Beyond, and that's where Nick Swartz and he's like, "Oh, are you guys making a movie here today?" <laughs> he's already there, hanging out. Oh, there. it's so weird. <laughs> like, like I, they like, didn't I, the set. They just went to Bed Bath they, and Beyond, and, and he pretended to work there, and that's where they got the idea. <laughs> they <laughs> also went by a Best Buy. He's also eating Wendy's fries. There's a lot of promotion in this movie. And why is Christopher Walken in this movie? Was this a low point, or is he friends with Sandler? But then why doesn't he show up in any of his other movies? He's doing pretty broad comedies at this point. He just finished doing The Wedding Crashers the year before. Wedding Crashers was kind of a bigger deal, though, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that yeah. felt like a better comedy than Click. Click. Yeah. No, this is when Walken's... Academy Award nominated Click. That's where you got to introduce it. The, and, and by the way, for a dream, what a linear and concise dream this is. Like, I love, how, li- oh, yeah. I love how clearly defined and not at all symbolic dreams are in Hollywood. Like, I love how you just know what a dream is instantly. That's all you're done. The end. Well, unless Lynch is in control of the yeah, dream. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess it's I don't really count Lynch part of the Hollywood circle, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all. That's not me being like, Ugh, Hollywood, yeah. I don't mind Hollywood that much. I'm just, when Hollywood wants Hollywood, to do dreams, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood's Colin. not throwing some weird, like they did it once in like a Hitchcock movie. Yeah. Like back in the 50s when they had Salvador Dali design the set. And that was a movie about how fucked up dreams were. So that makes what, sense. What but movie was this? I can't was... remember the name of the movie. I this it's one of the Jimmy Stewart movies. I know oh. that narrows it down, but I'm just saying. It's like five or six. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> like one, ten, one tenth of, of Hitchcock's <laughs> movies have Jimmy Stewart in them. Um, I, I don't know if I have any more. I just, I like it. A lot it. of penis jokes in this movie, right? They make fun of Adam's, baby Adam Sandler's tiny penis. Oh, his little schmeckle. And, and then Adam Sandler's. Oh. One of the weirdest lines I think I've ever heard in a movie. Holy crap! I'm in my mother's vagina. <laughs> That's great. And, and Mr. Morgan's like slipping on the vagina juices or oh, something. Oh yeah. Oh. Like, and was... he seems to really be. I don't know if I'm. If, uh, He's uh, really. Uh, Christopher like... Walken really gets into the role, or he really enjoys himself, or he just said, "All right, well, I might as well." I mean, I signed on, so I'm just going to give it my best. I think Christopher Walken just likes playing Christopher Walken. I think Christopher Walken's just like goofing around, like he's at he, that. Point. He does his little dance that he yeah. does in all of his movies. Yeah, he's just doing his little jokes and shit. And then, uh, he, and then, boom, turns out Angel of Death. So, there you go. What a twist. Oh, oh, that wasn't the twist. That's the... F- they're just ripping off Capra. I did. It's not, <laughs> it's not a twi- that can't be called a twist anymore. I guess. I guess. I mean, uh, the just... trivia. So, Adam Sandler and the film's producer were almost sued for plagiarism by Scholastic Inc. when the film's plot was revealed and well-known. <laughs> the reason being because in 1995, 11 years prior to this film, the... <laughs> they didn't use commas. The popular author R.L. Stein wrote a very similar story in his Tales to Give You Goosebumps, with almost the exact same plot and setup as the film, even down to both being titled Click. No legal action was ever taken as both agreed to the whole thing being a coincidence. I don't. 
think that's a coincidence. <laughs> like, Arlstein gives a shit. I don't... Also, he would have been afraid that Capper would come after him, or Capper's people. I don't... I don't remember that Goosebumps story. Uh, I don't remember it either, but... I, re- I read a lot of those Goosebumps books. Oh, yeah. I, we just talked about this the other day, because you saw the Goosebumps movie for some reason. It was a free ticket. Did you use the free ticket on a movie you're going to see? It, it does not give you an excuse to see a movie you wouldn't see. I, I heard Jack Black was great in it, and he wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, Jack Black. Ja- ja- Jack Black could not, could, could not play a writer in his, in his 50s? Oh, jeez, I'm shocked. <laughs> Arlstein had a cameo in the movie. <laughs> um, it says the film's premise was originated from a joke by writer Steve Curran. It was only upon a suggest- suggestion of turning into a feature by the girlfriend of co-writer Mark O'Keefe that the project got started off the ground. What? What is this? What? What? What is this joke? I gotta know what the joke is, and then what? what the joke co- is you lose your life if you just fast forward through it. I mean, yeah, it's kind of dumb, right? You just want to skip all the small moments, right? And then, and then, and then, and then, what's it's, the girlfriend thinking? Like, oh, you could turn that into a ninety-minute movie. This one joke you had, this five-second joke, would make a great movie. Yeah, I just I'm, I. I mean, I I like the movie, and I also hated it. I hate myself for liking this at all. Good, you should. You're uh, a bad person. Those kind of movies. I liked them <laughs> when they were camping, and Adam Sandler's like, "Hey, you want to hang out and have some food with my hippie parents?" Henry Winkler's here, and they're like, "No, let's watch Three's Company." And then like twenty kids are like, "Woo, Three's Company!" And then they go off and they watch Three's Company. Yeah, well, they're also in a big RV, and he's. I know. Just I'm just saying, right? Three's Company's pretty uh, great. I like. Three's I Company. forgot to mention there yeah. are. So so many needle drops to just to express what this next like three minutes of the scene is going to be about like i really wish i wrote down a couple of things because one is like um so something about like love is like isn't love isn't always on time because he was late to seeing his family yeah and i'm like everything was just punctuated by these like like the one line from a song and i'm like what is happening did you just give up on storytelling <laughs> Is this what is this was happening right well, I now? I think what we learned here is that when you're writing a movie and you can base it off of books maybe or plays, but probably not a joke. You probably shouldn't be basing your movies off of a joke your friend said one time. I mean... Those I, probably aren't good for like cultural currency, you know? I feel like there's just so much more to it that they could have explored. And, like, they did some good things that I really liked. I mean, they, I don't know, they, pretty but, mu- they pretty much went exactly where you thought it was going to go. There were no oh, heels. Yeah. There were no... Resume. And not only that... Like, Adam Sandler pretty much figures out what he needs to do halfway through the movie. He's like, oh, I shouldn't be a terrible husband anymore. But, yeah, he tries but, to give it back. But then they, but then they, they won't, won't let him. Know. They make him do the and second that, half of the movie. That's why I think it really gets to me, because I'm like, oh my god, this is like a horror movie now. I mean, I guess, but, I, but at that point, I decisions. think started earlier, maybe. or I don't, like, But you know it's going to be a dream, so who the fuck gives a shit? You I, know? Do you think this movie would have been better if you found out it wasn't a dream? And he just yeah. dies? On the on the yeah ground, right, and then he passes the, the torch to his son. Then I, I would have given. The, I said, "Oh, movie!" Was like, bl- I said, "Movie, you would have had some balls." I would have gone, yeah. "Movie, you earned my respect." Yeah, I. This is why. Let me edit it. Right. Let's <laughs> just fucking. But you got to give it the nice Hollywood ending, which doesn't really have an ending. Well, they they're doing the Capra thing. It just doesn't. It just. It's like it's like hey, look, kids, let's go have a pillow fight. The and the credits come up like. It's just so random. Like, it's almost... It's just literally like, all right, well, we ran out of film. Let's just stop it here at the end. The uh, end. It says, Alan Silvestri was attached to, as the film's composer, but he left the project in late March due to creative differences. Cryptic, there was barely a score in this movie. I think that's why he was <laughs> like, well... didn't do anything. You're not letting me do anything, so goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll just... We'll put all these songs that are going to tell you how the audience needs to feel. And, but we're not even going to play the whole song. We're just going to give you one line that's going to explain how the scene plays out. It's, I don't like that part. You the, know, the, I mean, two I, minutes. So, well, the other thing that I think hurts this movie is that there's not really a lot of time we spend in the first act. We kind of get to the remote pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. So, I, but I don't know. But I almost think the movie can kind of do it because the first act that it's trying to set up is like the first act of every movie that's like this movie. Yeah. So... Like, we know this story, so it almost kind of... I almost think that they're smarter for just, oh, let's brush past all this crap because everybody knows this story already, so who who cares about the boring stuff? But, all, but, but, that, but that's what the, makes the whole movie. But, the, but that, yeah, characters. but then the payoff is you don't really have that emotional investment anymore because, like, it doesn't... The, the, the relationship to the father-son doesn't mean that much because it's not... I haven't seen it, I guess. I haven't lived through it with them, so, like, I don't care. Like, all I have is this swim meet that he didn't show up for and he thought his kid was Chinese. Like, who cares? <laughs> Like, I don't this... know. I don't care about this with me. I need something bigger. I need something more meaty. He doesn't even do anything with his daughter. 
Like he just keeps looking at her. But boobs, that's it. Hey, fu- really oh my god, Terry Crews showed up in this movie. Who? Terry Crews showed up in this movie. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention uh, that too. Ah, Terry Crews, why? He's why? been in like most of Sailor movies from now on. Oh no, I just don't get it. He's, I just he's, who cares? They mute him because he's dancing in the car. Ah, uh, but he sucks. Oh, he's not that funny. <laughs> He tries too hard. Uh, and then you know what I was really upset. I'm like, what's, I'm like, it's weird that he keeps fast forwarding. Like, what does the rest of the world think when he's fast forwarding? But then you know what? Christopher Walken come out and he kind of explained it. So I'm like, all right, I guess. Yeah. But like, wouldn't he have memories then? Would he have memories of it happening? Or no, because he's like a zombie. It's just his, yeah, it's just his he's, body that's stuck yeah. there. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They, yeah, Christopher Walken came ah. out. Christopher Walken Christopher gave Walken, you all a plot Christopher Walken needed. pretty much lampshade dimmed all that. He said, <laughs> all right, here are the rules. There you go. Uh, yeah, James Earl Jones, right? Is the commentary, which is not how commentary works. <laughs> it's not just a narrative. <laughs> it's not. It's not going. Yeah, it's not just it, a narrative. You, you can't argue with the, the commentary. But then, you know, this movie's like it's like Bruce Almighty, right? With like a character gets these godlike powers, but then only uses them for shitty selfish reasons, right? Yeah. Like that. Like he's got a magic arm. When he's the first thing he thinks of is, let me get to the quick parts of the sex with my wife. Let me do that. Or let me look at this lady's boobs while they're slapping around. Or let me, let me slap it around. around. Or let me, let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me fart on my boss's face. That'd be hilarious. Let me take down my right? w- wife's new husband's uh, like yeah, balls. Let me, let me, let me kick him in the crotch. That's true. I'm thinking like, God, like, like, like no one, nobody, to go to nobody thinks hmm, what kind of good things can I do with my amazing. And then you know what he does with the remote? He just throws it out at the end. And then, right when then you think, oh, maybe it wasn't a dream. He's like, oh, I guess I'm not going to use the remote. And he, Don't throw the god remote in the trash, Adam Sandler. Keep that in a safe so nobody else uses it. Yeah. My God. Make sure your son doesn't pick it up for the sequel. That is not the appropriate son of the click. Son of click. Remember that son of mask movie. <laughs> oh, that's what I was referencing. Like, my God, why would son you make that movie ten years later? It was it just ten years? It felt like it felt like it way. Too you know, long I think afterwards. I think Alan Cummings in that movie, which is a little sad. Oh. I feel bad for anybody in that movie. It killed life. Jamie Kennedy's whatever he had of a career. Good. Jesus, Jimmy, Ken- Jimmy Kennedy was annoying. Um, annoying. Why can't he go back in time? He can. He just, he rewinds. No, he can't. No, you, can, you can watch back yeah, in that, time. Yeah, that's rewinding. Yeah, but... It's you, not like, it's but, not a time but, machine. But you can't, but... It's a fast, but it is a time machine because it no, sends him forward. Yeah, because it's fast forwarding. But he doesn't. But, 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 he, but he can't go back. But when you you can rewind it and then and just go back it. to the present again. Yeah, because you can always. So what? So but if I'm just saying, oh, we're gonna get into the, we're, let's get into the <laughs> real meat of this. I'm just saying, if you can go, if you can, why, <laughs> why can't he just go? Can he just see fast forward and then go back to the present? Right? Why does they have to make him go to the present but not go back? But the back and the forward are not balanced. I think you already answered your. Uh, no, it doesn't question. make any sense. No. The Entropy should not factor into the God remote. Because this whole movie is based on a joke. So they're going to take it through. They did, <laughs> I, uh, fine. 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 And I like the I like the, the, the future radio broadcast that was super topical. Oh, right. 26, like he's, 26 yeah, 2017. Yeah, Britney Spears and Kevin Federline jokes. And there was like another joke after that of like a celebrity that, that doesn't mean anything now, but only meant something when that movie you came Michael out. Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Where he's going to sue himself? Yeah, sue himself for molesting himself. Yeah. Like, like that's. It, it, I just like I can't. I can't, imagine, I can't for, imagine the I year can't 2030 for, having that convent. No, I can't wait for February 16th, yeah. 2017, when everyone gets crazy about that. Goes crazy on click because they just went all crazy for Back to the Future Day. I don't think it didn't feel that crazy for Back to the Future Day. Like I, I didn't. I forgot until Amazon reminded me. Oh man, no, you're like I. I, I, was I nobody talked. Nobody it. I knew talked about it. I mean, I don't do a lot of things online like you do, so I don't. You know, I, I could have easily missed it. It was so fucking annoying. I just I was I just noticed. Oh, it's weird that Amazon's doing really well at selling Back to the Future Part Two today. That's weirdly specific. <laughs> well, I, and then someone's t- I told that to somebody said, "Oh, I think it's Back to the Future Day now." And I go, "Oh, I'm well, whatever." S- I'm very happy that I watched Back to the Future earlier this year. So I because if I had to watch it after this whole fucking yeah. thing, I'd be so I would never have. It is, yeah, I don't I don't I don't. And this movies aren't bad, but I would never watch them again. They... I don't see I don't see the crazy like fanaticism that's around them. Yeah. Like I have a friend who really really likes them. He's super. Uh, that, that's good. Like I hadn't him. watched it. And I think I watched it in high school, and I was the first time I watched. It. He's like, you haven't you haven't seen these movies? What? And then we watched them. I'm like, oh yeah, it was pretty good. But like whatever. It must be I like guess. the Goonies. Yeah, the Goonies. I don't like that much either. I like the Goonies, but I watched that when I was a kid. 
See, I wish when I was a kid too. Like my, it was oh. one of the, yeah, like that's crazy. My that you're my, like my father wasn't that much, was was kind of a young dad. So so like a lot of the stuff that he was into was stuff that I like. He was still into stuff that I would have been into. So like he was really into, he's like oh let's watch the Goonies wouldn't that be great? And he's like oh is this movie great? And I'm like yeah whatever. <laughs> Same thing with Star Wars. He's like is this Star Wars great? And I go mm-hmm. yeah I, I I like Star Wars. I've never been a giant fan. It's, it's, we're, gonna, we're talking about Star Wars, Star Wars again. again. Ah, I'm, done, no, I'm, not, I'm not that interested in Star Wars. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Let's, let's last looks this. Uh, yeah. Already. Yeah. All right. What are your last looks, Joe? Uh, I liked it. Sorry. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, your I, last look. I, I'm sorry. Well, why that, do you like it? I just, just the dad beats. The, the I when he missed you, saw, it, you feel you when he you, misses out on his, in like, your his mind, kids growing up, and yeah. it's just. And when he misses out on his, his father passing away, and then he's just, all of a sudden, it just feels like he's at the end of his life. He's seeing his son get married, and I'm just like, he just wanted to pass all the little, like, tiny things in his life, yeah. and it's just, and he focused on, like, work, and I'm like, if you have a family, don't just only, uh, and I'm just like, this is why I don't want to have a family, because yeah. I just don't want to, like... It feels, like, like, it it feels can, like this movie hit home for you, that's what it feels like. Also, I, this, right? this is my last movie I saw in the theater of Sandler's. Like, you gave up after this movie. Yeah, because... So I, you didn't like it when you saw it originally. No, I I, I, I cried. You did, so you did like it, so why'd you stop I really seeing liked, cause I really liked, because I... was the next movie? Chuck and Larry, and I wanted to fucking shoot uh, him. That was, the next movie was Rain Over Me. Oh, yeah, well, that didn't come on theaters. It, oh, really? Like, it, it had a limited release or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. Around me. Yeah, yeah, not not around us, no. Chuck and Larry, Jesus, God help us. And so I skipped that one, and then there was Zohan, and I'm like, I'm, I'm done, I'm too I old I can't believe Chuck and Larry is on Netflix. That feels like a movie that would almost it need Netflix should, to yeah. survive. Like, it's just, throw all your crap movies on Netflix, well, hopefully they'll, they'll I, I got watch. I got it, $5 bin. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> just like I got for like the rest of the ones that were on Netflix. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are your last looks? Well, let's look. I, I like in the future, he wasn't really that bad of a father, you know. Like, like they all really loved. It's not. Like, it's not like they they could have really gone overboard. Like everybody hates him, and he's all alone at the top oh, of his yeah. tower, and like all of it. But he like he still has a pretty good relationship with his family, and like he's just he gives, a bad husband. Yeah, like that's pretty much it. Like yeah. so, like whatever. Like, but I get. But that I guess that's that's half of what he learns. But then he also learned to be a good father and slash a good son. But didn't even feel like he was that bad of a son in the beginning either. I guess last looks, uh, you gotta set up your things a lot better, and then you gotta follow through a lot better on your setup. So I guess what I'm saying is your movie needs to be better. Like I don't, like top to bottom, your movie needs to be not this movie. None, like, of, these, none, of, none of the emotional beats did anything for you. Then? No, it's because like I said it's so. Maybe, so obvious like maybe it's because and was, so on the nose and so in your face with it it's there's no subtlety you and I, and I don't want to last look the subtlety thing again because I've done that enough but you need to you can't just kick me over the head with it that's all this, that's what this movie is it's family propaganda it's it's typical white class middle white white white, coll- white collar middle class propaganda family value stuff right I don't know I'm just done with it over it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying Whoa. it. Fact, more importantly, I know it's a fucking dream, so there are no stakes anymore. Whew. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's close this one up. All right, Lev. Are we good? <laughs> All right. We're going to get on time. How are we doing? Yeah, it's probably time to wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank Sidewalks for sponsoring us. Sidewalks. You even walked on a sidewalk today. Get off your couch, you lazy fuck, and take a walk on the sidewalk. All Where right. the sidewalk ends. Thank you, Joe. Go walk on the sidewalk <laughs> as long as you can. Nothing. Don't oh, I like to thank I like to thank Joe the Crispy Crunch Beckman for coming on down to our studios in Milford. I'm sticking with that. Is that where you're dubbing me, the Crispy Crunch? Yeah, Joe the Crispy Crunch Beckman doing his doing his things. Joe crunch, crunch, crunch. Joe has a very good website oh. on online. Uh, uh, things I am not allergic to. It's just a, a nice Instagram of Joe and all the pictures of all the things he's not allergic to. It's very cool. So go check that out at www.thingsnotallogitude.joevecman.stillnotallogitude.com. Oh, Thousand years, okay. Rick and Morty, okay. Joe Beckman. All right, all right. <laughs> I got your joke. <laughs> I was like, where's this going? <laughs> all right, I, of course, am Patrick Scale. You, uh, you can find some of our short films and episodic stuff at www.quixoticunited.com. Joe, say good night. Thanks for listening. Good night, and thanks for listening. <laughs> Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. The kisses are hers and hers and his. Three's company too. Come and dance.
dance on our floor. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is new. I'll give you all the movies, and then I'll give you the one that won Best Picture. Okay. Winter's Bone was nominated for Best Picture. Winter's Bone was? True. Yeah. It really, like... Wasn't that good. Because they had, like, ten movies they had to put up. They don't have to put up ten movies. They just have to get above a threshold. So it's weird that many people saw Winter's Bone and then thought it was the Best Picture of the year. Winter's Bone. True Grit. Okay, fine. Toy Story 3. Fine. The, the Social Network. Good. The Kids Are All Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was all right. Inception. Best Picture, though? Inception. Inception didn't win, though. No. Okay. The Fighter. Uh, the Fighter. Black Swan. Oh, Jesus. 127 Hours. Oh, yeah, that forgettable movie. And the best picture that year. Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. Because it's not the best picture. I, wa- I ended up watching it on What is later. it? The King's Speech. Oh, yeah. Fuck the King. That was it. That was it. It was between the King's Speech and Social Network. I said the King's Speech better than I wanted. King's Speech sucks. But of course they picked the British period piece. Of course they picked the British period piece. So like everybody feels like they're fucking fancy pants in Hollywood. Best directors that year uh, nominated Joe and Ethan Cohen, David True Fincher. Grit. Social Network. David O. Russell for The Fighter. Yep. That was, like the, that was like the first of his new wave. Yep. Darren Aronofsky for Black, Black Swan. Swan. And the winner that year, Tom Hooper for The King's Speech. I don't even know who Tom Hooper is. He's got a new movie that I'm going to see that's coming out soon. What movie? Uh, the Danish Girl. What the fuck is The Danish I think Girl? It, I think he's doing The Danish Girl. I, hold on. Let me check my facts you don't before even I say know. that. I think he's doing The Danish Girl. Yeah. With uh, Eddie Redmayne. Oh, uh, yeah. Where he Red plays man. a trans, yeah, transgender. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this movie now. I just haven't heard it called by a title, I guess. Okay, yeah. All right. And then, hold on. So there's there's more for the, so the Steve Jobs, uh, yeah. it, it uh, finished in seventh place with $7.3 million. Seventh place? Bringing its current domestic cum to just about $10 million. Steve Jobs, $7.3 million finished. Barely beat the 6.7 that Ashton Kutcher's critically ex- exoriated? Ex- Excoriated? Yes. Jobs. Lowercase j. Big OBS. <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're, this is the third Steven Jobs movie out in like a two-year span. Maybe we're just kind of done with Steve Jobs movies at the moment, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe this one took a little too long to be made. Oh, man. Hotel Transylvania still holding strong at number five. That <laughs> get around, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe there was Sandler. Maybe there was there any families. I was I'm watching the Hulu Plus show, right? Because I had a lot of time while the After Effects was rendering yesterday, because mm-hmm. it took all day. All right, so I'm watching the casual, watching the oh, difficult, yeah, yeah, watching yeah. difficult people, that? watching the mini project. I think if I have to pick, if you're asking me, Hulu, oh, okay. Amazon, Netflix. Which groupings of original programmings? I would, if I could only have one, it's it's Hulu. I would pick Hulu. Some people might go Netflix because they got the House of Cards and the Orange is the New Black. I don't watch House All right? of Cards. And they're kind of kind of neat. Yeah. But I think I would be more likely to make a show like The Difficult People or The Casual. I've heard Difficult or People the Mindy is Project. fantastic. I love that show. I need to that watch show that. is great. It's only eight episodes, right? So far. I mean, I think they're only, they're, they've only shown seven. I've, I've only watched five, four, five. I think they finished up their first season. Good. Well, I mean, I, I, see, I, saw, I, see, I saw seven there last night. At the top of my thing on Hulu, yeah. it says new season 2016. Oh, cool, cool, cool. That, listen, I like it. That's all I'm saying. I like it. It's good. To James Urbaniac. Mm-hmm. He's my new favorite guy. Oh, cool. He's like right below David Hyde Pierce. Oh. So I got to work. I got to find. But I, gotta, I, think, I think it's much easier for me to get James Urbaniac than it will be David Hyde Pierce. Yeah. So. He's in American Splendor. I know. We've had this talk. Oh, he, we had this he talk. plays Crumb. Yes, we had this talk. Show. We had it. We had, I'm just he had, excited. He had like I know, I know something about thing. some guy that you like. I know. I'm just excited. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking, oh, i got to get him in a movie I do someday. I'll be very excited. Yeah. He's just a delight to see on screen. Yeah, he showed up in Harmontown. Yeah? For an episode. That's awesome. Because uh, he had nothing better to do. He did, <laughs> I, I believe that. <laughs> He's got a podcast. Yeah? And it's uh, it's called um, Getting On with James Urbaniak. I wish I, I wish I liked podcasts. I'd listen to it. It's 15 minutes. Yeah, no. Still, he just should, tells yeah, their just, stories. Yeah, see, I don't really care about that. Okay. If he had, like, a show and he built them in a narrative and I could watch, maybe. But a guy just talking, I don't like Wow, well, it is a narrative. It's like a radio show. Yeah, He's, see, I don't he, like ro- that. he writes it out like a, a story mm. with his friend and then they, they do the radio show together. Mm. And it's got, like... A and everything. Yeah. You should listen to an episode. Yeah, that's See, I, that, that, listen, listeners, keep listening to podcasts. They're pretty sweet. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, we're already we're going. Uh, yeah, we've been for a while. <laughs> I, I, I'm just not a fan. Did here, you? So I, don't, I, I, I had left turn on a while ago. So you were, in, you were it, in the middle. We were. I think we were in the middle of complaining about the Hurt Locker versus Avatar. Oh, okay. So it wasn't on when you left the rooms. When I was, no. Okay. When you were met disparaging me? No. No, no, no. no. I was I was messing. I was seeing how the levels were. So I was like, oh. We we didn't even we didn't even have phones in. <laughs> What? We didn't even have headphones in yet. Like you were just looking at the lights? Yeah, we were just seeing how high the lights would go if I made different voices. All right, well, I kind of <laughs> wish I had it on now. I, I went on for a while. Next time I might turn it on. <laughs> that might be what I do. I'm glad that's what you do when, when I'm here, when I'm not here. That's how you, that's how you pass some time. It was fun. All right, then. Fine. All right, all right. Okay. Let's, let's get to business. Merry Christmas, Booby Ho! Merry Christmas, Emporium! 